starting now. <clears throat> <laughs> Why would people listen to this, oh man? Oh, my gosh. I have no clue. It's well, fun, though. Welcome back to the Boo Muddy Podcast. Yeah, welcome back. We're just... We're just chatting. This is kind of our our time to just kind of hang out, hang out and do our thing. I just you know and not be too serious. Yeah, we were just talking about feeling our feelings about waking up early and not yeah. waking up early. I so I'm in. You're like you're say what you were saying. Get your out of yeah. Play. So like I get up early throughout the week and I try to go to bed early, but like I'm tired, you know. So the weekend it's like oh you get to sleep in, and then I sleep in. And yeah, I sleep more, but it's like I wake up, I feel like my head hurts. Like I still have a headache now just from nothing other than sleeping in. And then I feel like, ugh, I feel late. I don't care about losing time because it's the weekend. I'm not going to do anything. But like I feel lazy, I feel down. Like I don't know, yeah. man. Like I get up, if I get up early, I'll feel tired. But it's like uh, my I feel physically good. If I sleep in, yeah, maybe I slept more. But I just feel like I got hit by a train, you know. Yeah. It's like, it's weird for me because I like... I like the way work structures my day. I like getting yeah, up early and doing definitely. that. But then you like, you get tired of working so much, and then you decide like, yeah, you're gonna sleep in. Sleeping in to me is like eight. Yeah, like that's sleeping in. So I get to eight, and I'm like, oh, the day is ruined. Yeah, I've slept in this whole time. What am I gonna do with all this, this wasted time? You know, it's yeah. like it's weird. It's like I don't like sleeping in really. No, like I'm a, I'm not. You get up way earlier than I do. You get up at what five forty five? Uh, five thirty eight. <laughs> five thirty eight. <laughs> that's morning. that's that's when the three alarms, the snooze yeah. buttons hit. No, dude, I do this thing, and I highly recommend everybody pick this up. I've made this a habit. I when my alarm goes off, I literally, you know, like when you kip up to like get up from the ground, yeah. I literally launch out of bed. Yeah, I throw the covers off. I go hit my alarm and then I don't get back in bed for the first like couple minutes. Mm-hmm. Cuz if I don't, like I don't keep my phone by my bed, but if I did, like I'd hit my alarm and I hit snooze and I'd feel miserable and I wait like it sucks cuz you're like boom, now you're cold and now you don't want to get out of yes. bed like but like if you do that, it makes your morning a lot less miserable overall. Just like launch out of bed, turn off your alarm. Another thing, another tip. I've never had this problem with um with hunting. It seems like it's like I always get out of bed excited, ready to go. Yeah. But like work and other school or whatnot. But if you go to Walmart, I don't know if you've seen my alarm. Have you seen that bell alarm I've got, no. <laughs> dude? Dude, this thing is like the old fashioned. It has a little thing in the middle, and it does this, and it hits the bells. Yeah. Dude, it sounds like a freight train is going off. It is loud. You set that up across the room. Yeah. There's Dude, you wake up to fear, man. There is no, there is no like. I'm just gonna let it play and just <laughs> sleep through it. There's no sleeping through this because this thing is ear piercing loud. I mean, you wake up and run to it and yeah. turn it off. Like, <gasps> I took it one time to a church camp, and and we had this we had this room with a bunch of guys. There was probably five guys or six guys in there. And I had one of these bell alarms because I took it with me because yeah. I, I couldn't trust myself waking up to right. the phone alarm. I'll just roll over in my sleep, turn it off, and yeah, forget and, it. and forget it. You know, I'm up way late, so I get this thing. I put this thing out, and <laughs> <laughs> five like forty five comes around, and this thing. I mean, when it goes off, it jumps and like ding ding, and it'll like if you don't, you have to put it like in the center of a table because it'll zing itself <laughs> off the table. <laughs> Like it drops, <laughs> it shing itself <laughs> off the table. Well, I, I, it, it turned on, and I like, I didn't like wake up and go run and grab it like I normally yeah. did. I was, I like waited like three seconds, and I like turn over, and one of the guys <laughs> had jumped at the same reaction, jumped out of bed, found it. It looked like a bear going through a campsite, <laughs> you know, just grabbing yeah. blankets, throwing. Found it, and I, I turn over just to see this. He finds the thing, and it's like trying, trying to get to it to stop, it but he doesn't know where to stop it. 
And I kid you not, he takes it and just chucks it at the wall, shatters it, like shatters the glass, but it didn't turn it off. So it's just <laughs> the thing's still going. I mean, so then he runs over to, I don't, this guy must not be a morning person. He runs over to it. It just starts stomping, like just literally stomping. And like, I'm like, I'm like, dude, that's my alarm dude, clock. Dude, it's got a button on it. Dude, yeah. It's like you got a little switch that says on and off on it. And he's, I mean, he's literally just stomping on my alarm clock. And I'm like, dude, he goes, what was that thing? I'm like, that was my, <laughs> my alarm, clock. My yeah. clock. He's like, don't ever bring that to any one of these functions <laughs> again. That was, he was like, I was in fear. But like, he, I mean, oh, like baseball threw it and like almost put a dent in the wall. Like That's speed. That's crazy. Yeah, shattered the thing. It, it, I mean, it works. It gets the best you. parts of the thing still going off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Glass breaks and Bing. just... <laughs> I have it in the room. I'll have to show it to you after this. But it's like... It's it's loud, dude. That's a good I mean, investment, though. Yeah. And then you set it. You have to set it across the room because then you got to get out. there. I mean, there's no... Once you hear it, I'll show it to you later. There's no <laughs> waiting. It's up, out, run. Yeah. You're like, full sprint ahead. So, yeah. that's That's how I get up in the morning. And I use that for... A lot of things. When I'm hunting, I can use my phone alarm and pop right up out of bed, spring in with a smile, and make coffee and go have fun. But like the mornings of like work and school, it's like put that big boy up there and put an amplifier yeah. on it because I need it. You know. I figured out that your ringer volume, if you have an iPhone, like your ringer volume is how loud your alarm is. So there's one where my alarm was going off. So I was like, yeah. Off in the corner, and I didn't even know it. My dad, it's like, "Hey, your alarm's been going off for like 15 minutes." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's strange. Like those, I don't like those. Things. There's and it. I've noticed that they've turned down. They turn down after like five yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. They get softer. I'm yeah, like, no, I'm that like, thing need to be getting louder, man. Yeah, if I haven't woken up by that time and turned Something's it off, that, wrong. That thing needs to be jinging, and you know, jing, jing, jinging, jing right zing, off the table, zinging right off the table. Yeah, no, I mean that thing is brutally loud. Um, no, it's uh, well, that's that. Yeah, welcome back to the <laughs> welcome to the big again. Money. Yeah, again. I mean, here we are just chatting it up, and we were we were talking earlier about just like. Maybe getting out today, yeah, and and doing the packs. I don't know if all right, who else is listening to this, or probably no one, but probably no one. But uh, just as like two college guys, you know, we're going through the like the thick of it. Obviously, we don't have like family and <laughs> bills and like the stress of like this and that. But like, there is like at our age, we're, we're figuring things out. Like, we're not bright, you know. We're just kind of rolling with the punches. And sometimes, man, you just got to get outside and do something hard. Yeah. Like, it's like, there's something about, like, I know why so many people turn to the gym when they're, like, stressed out. Like, you know, like, oh, my girlfriend broke up with me. It's time for me to go to the gym and get jacked. Because there's something about doing something hard that, like. It just makes you feel better. Yeah, it makes you feel better and eases your mind. For me, like, if it, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a physical exercise mm-hmm. type of guy i mean things things have to hit rock bottom before um, <laughs> things gotta get bad before you pick up a weight yeah before i'm doing something i mean it's like i mean i'll pick up i'll pick up a Krispy cream donut <laughs> before i'm picking up the dumbbells man but uh but no like every now and then just throwing on a pack and just like doing something hard and walking outside oh it just like re- it's like the mental reset I went out with my bow by myself a couple of weeks ago, and it was like one of those days where it was like 103, like everything was dry. I didn't see a single like fish, but I was out. I stayed out there for like two hours, sweated, like my whole shirt soaked, covered in bug. But I'm like, it feels so good just to like sweat again because I used to work a manual labor job, or I'd used to have you know you go high like you do something hard. But I've been working a desk job over this, like, summer for an internship. And then I've been going to the gym, but, like, I don't know. It's not anything crazy. So it was felt nice. I'm like, man, I felt I went home, took a shower. I'm like, I don't want to do that again. It wasn't nice being hot. But no. But you felt, like, accomplished after just standing there and That's what sweating, I like. you know. When I'm, like, out and I, like, I get up at, like, 30 minutes before sunrise, make my coffee, and, like, it's wintertime, and I get to go check the trap lines with my bibs on and stuff. Oh, dude, those are the best. Yeah. You get up, and you're, like, out there, and you're, like, Crisp doing something. Air. Yeah. It's, like, those are the best days ever to do yeah. that. It's just because you feel accomplished. It feels wild. It feels like you're taking a step back in time because yeah. you're trapping and stuff. Right. 
It's it's amazing. I I really enjoy doing stuff like that. In the summertime, it's just for <sighs> oh yeah, dude. It's that's like, that's the summertime mood. Yeah, the summer. Everyone else, like you know, all, all the white girls. <laughs> I was gonna say all everybody girls, seems to like summer. Except oh, <laughs> I hate summer. It's I can't, awful. <laughs> it's the worst. The bugs. The this. You, I hate going out and like getting spider webs in my face. It's like mosquitoes. I hate walking through the woods and you feel sticky. Yeah, you're. You just, know what I mean? You're like, oh. there could be a snake. I think there's a tick like on, on my me. leg. I'm covered in sweat. I got a spider web to the face. There's weeds everywhere. It feels horrible. Yeah, I and you don't... go in the woods in the fall, and you're like crisp air, open, yeah. open woods. Like everything feels good. You're like, yeah, breathe again. Yeah, now, summer's right just na- like. Ugh. I think right now we have like there's probably like seventy percent humidity outside. I'll check right now yeah. for the viewers. Yeah, we we walk outside and it's like get the scuba mask. We're like breathing in water. Like yeah. we're I think we're amphibious here. Like we are. Gotta be. We yeah. I mean it's ridiculous. How much, like, you know, people who listen to this maybe in the West or people who listen to this up north more. <laughs> what is it? The dew point is 70 degrees, and it is 82 degrees. That's insane. And it is 4.30 p.m. What, what's the? what's The, the humidity is 73%. 73%. That's insanity. That's crazy. So there's, like, dew forming right now because it's so humid. <laughs> <laughs> the air is so waterlogged that water is... is coming out of the air yeah it's, it's <laughs> i mean <laughs> it's not good <laughs> it only gets more than this when it's raining it's actually like yeah that's com- the only yeah. time it gets more water <laughs> yeah. in the air is when literal raindrops are falling yeah it's ridiculous so it's like i walked outside with my phone in my hand and my phone like covered in water sweat. from being inside yeah. cold i'm like i'd like wipe the moisture off my phone screen i'm like what the heck this is not right and this is dumb this and that's is stupid welcome of course to living in illinois southern illinois it's like everyone gives us a hard time for being northerners but like this we, yeah, we're, we're like a, we're like in kentucky we're, yeah where we're, we're, we're at dude somebody didn't know that the other day yeah it's like i'm from southern illinois they're like oh it's like spring i'm like no like basically kentucky and they're like wait like, <laughs> illinois touches like kentucky Kentucky? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. We (laughs) look at a map. Yeah, yeah. It touches Kentucky and we And we are here. We are there. (laughs) I mean we are like these I work in Kentucky. Yeah. I go to I drive to Kentucky every day for work. I know. He's 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 in it all the time. I mean, I'm like I'm like an hour from it. I mean it's not We're not that far. It's not far. I mean we are basically in Kentucky. I'm where I work is like 40 minutes from like the southern tip of Missouri like I'm not far at all from Missouri so yeah that's right it's like you know and people consider Missouri like the yeah it's midwestern but the southern part a lot of people consider that more of a southern state you know where is the Mason Dixon line I don't it, I, I think it goes through Missouri like it goes up are through, we north of it no it goes through Missouri cuts down and, and cuts us off okay where is the Mason Dixon line? Because I hear about that all the time. I'm like, we've got to be south of the Mason Dixon, but I don't know, man. No, I think it. I think it basically just cuts us off right there, Mason Northerners, freaking Dixon. Northerners. I know, I know. We're technically part of them, but we're not. I hate them all. Yeah, I'm telling you. Oh, it's so rude. Mason Dixon line is, is like Maryland, like the top of Maryland. What? Yeah, like that's what that's showing me. I don't think that's a right. Mason thing. Well, don't look at Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Open gosh! Source. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Mason Dixon line. Oh, it, we're like. <laughs> yeah. it, that's dumb. We're like forty minutes for the Mason Dixon line. Yeah, like. So he works past. I it. work south of the Mason Dixon. Well, here, and I live north. What's dumb is that the Mason Dixon line goes to the top Deep of Missouri. See my feet. I just put my feet they up might, on the they table. might, they you know? might. I might get some tips, man. <laughs> dude, put up a Patreon link. I'll start. I'll start propping my feet up on this table, man. Dude, I'll do anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need some get gear. some subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I need this spotting scope. Elk dude. hunting in Montana, feet included. Yeah, dude. <laughs> if Sneak peek. If you screenshot this <laughs> video, I'm sending Interpol after you as like copyright laws. <laughs> Um, Size 14s for your viewing <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> Dude, we've got the Mason Dixon line goes to the top of Missouri, which is dumb. That doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. Like, it, like, it's they over. They just hate us. It's, abo- it's like above Maryland, which Maryland, 
That's northern. That's north of us. That's, yeah. yeah, that's way north of us. Way north of us. If you do the bands, anyway, well, the top of Missouri is north of us too. Yeah, like uh, several hours. That's like above Quincy. Like that's crazy. Yeah, no, we got screwed. Yeah, we we got barely cut out of it. You know. Anyways, that doesn't matter, dude. We've been going for a while. And we I'm having even mentioned Montana. I'm having fun. We're just kind of getting. We through make it. a comedy podcast. Yeah, I feel like Theo Vaughn on here, man. Yeah, just just do a. I just add it to it. I'm just. I, I think we need to also kind of like to have fun with it, you know, and just kind of like. If anyone's <laughs> listening, you can just hear us ramble on about our day and how we get up in the morning. Um, My dad said he was listening to Theo Vaughn the other day, and he was talking about how he grew up in like a rough neighborhood, and he didn't know like inside dogs were a thing because it's all like you know just pit bulls like out in the street. Yeah, and he, said he went to one of his friends' house, and he's sitting in the kitchen, and a big golden retriever came around the corner, and he said, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> He said, that's the prettiest dog I'd ever seen. He said, that thing was hot. <laughs> start talking about the dog. Dude, he, he's wild. He's wild. He just comes up with some out-of-pocket <laughs> stuff. I love it. I love it. Just, It's good. Yeah. I, um, yeah. No, so, us coming from the Mason-Dixon line, we, we're, we're going to pick up in Montana, where we were. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Day six, coming out of the tents. Yeah. That's where we were. Making a fire. Yeah, making a fire. That mm. Mm, that was very so sensual. Delightful. That was very <laughs> yeah, dude. It sounded good in these headphones. <laughs> <laughs> what was that over there? Uh, yeah, no. It, <laughs> that and so Montana is a twenty four hour drive, so we're like far away from home, and it looks like there's like it doesn't even it it's just it like we talked about last podcast. It doesn't even look like home. No. There's like it's like and, we went to Mars. Yeah, basically, basically, and. Like, I guess we went out at a time where it was really dry because everything was just tan. Yeah. Like, the basins and stuff. I thought the, the valleys would be more green. No. No. They weren't really that pretty, to be quite honest, in the in the valleys. I'm sure it is at some point in time, yeah. in spring or something. I don't know. But where we went, we were, I was like, huh, this is interesting. It's like those YouTube videos. Have you ever seen T-Rex arms on YouTube? No. They have, like, he has this, all of their videos have this color scale. And it's like grayish pale green, so everything like looks the same. Like it's kind of like that. Like yeah. you just put a, a color scale on Montana. It was just kind of like, ugh. like was, everything's kind of dry. Yeah, like in the valleys, and then you got yeah. up, and it was totally different. Yeah. Then yeah, there was yeah. greenery everywhere. That's true. Up in top, I guess there was just more water up top yet still because of the heat difference or something. I don't know what the deal was, but. Um, yeah, if someone wants to drop that down in the YouTube just, comments, just rake us over the coals. Yeah, just let us know why that happens, Mister Physicist. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> ooh, 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 la la. Yeah, no. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, oh my goodness, I remember just being in Montana throughout this time. Like the the level of jokes that we would make. Like I'm not gonna get into them all, but like, <laughs> just just up. It's a lot about like suicide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it was brutal. There was a lot of jokes. Um, there was a lot of jokes up on that mountain. I mean, I think once there's some about shared pain. Yeah. That like, it, I mean, the military uses it. That you know, people backcountry hunt together. They know it. You know the you know boot camps. This that firefighter training. Whatever. I don't know. But just something about shared pain brings two people closer together. And, like, there's a trust that me and Luke have between each other that, like, we don't – that I don't have with just, like, a random other hunter. Yeah. Like, the, what I would go do with Luke, I wouldn't do with just some random people generally, you know, and I – and you know, and how that works. So – I like we're. I consider us the A team. I, yeah. I tell them that all the time, and it's always like it's concerning to like add new people into like the squad because you're like I don't know if that person's gonna hold up, and you don't want to like invest ten days of your vacation time to like yeah. have someone who's not pulling his weight through, right. you know, and that just that just gets annoying really quickly. <laughs> Make a joke and they get offended out there. Yeah, no like, place for that. There's no place <laughs> for that. There's, you have to brush everything off out there, like because there's like you're with that person, and don't get me wrong, we we tapered off our conversations towards the end. We just were quiet. We just had to stop. Yeah, we just didn't talk as much towards the end. But that was we were under mental duress. And then the way back, the way back, way back, we didn't fight. No, we, we didn't fight. 
and it was comical, <laughs> but we had a discussion about spring water versus purified water that got a little heated, a little too heated, I might add. The apple was so dumb. It oh. was one of the. <laughs> oh, I almost, I totally forgot about the apple. Yeah. You Don't. were just like you just brought it up out of nowhere. Started okay. Spat. All right, we got we got to get through the Montana trip, okay. and we're gonna bring up All spring right. water and the apple conversation. We'll put up a poll. We we will put up a poll. That is a great idea. Okay. So weird. It's not weird. Anyways, so <sighs> day six, Luke's day coming six. out of his tent and distraught. Might <laughs> I add? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's 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 broken. He's a broken man right yeah. now, and so uh, we're. I getting, don't want to carry the boats anymore. <laughs> the logs Not when are, it's raining. The logs are getting heavy, <laughs> and uh, so we are, we are, you know, getting out of there, getting stuff ready. Um, there's still a level of like fog yeah. across the basin, so we didn't really, we couldn't see anything, so we weren't really like too up and ready to get going really fast that morning so we did make a fire real quick dried out some stuff because we just needed to heat up which was amazing the fire fire out there i'm telling you what is like the biggest morale boost that was awesome fire like we did that what three days three days in a row two days two days two days the fire and that yeah. really picked us up like really like a lot yeah um so i would definitely recommend the fires that's like easy yeah and out there even after it rained yeah it was like I mean, you could spark up a fire. I understand why they have wildfires out there yeah. now. Because, like, the, between, like, the pine, you did, or what was that, tar? You put the... I, like, got the pine sap, sap. like, the pitch or whatever. Yeah. I just scraped. I didn't even use, like, petroleum jelly and cotton balls. I just yeah. lit that with a lighter, and then that lit all the wood. I was like, oh, it yeah. was way easier. Like, I lit it half expecting it not to work, and then it went fine. And yeah. I was like, oh, great. That pine, that pine pitch or... Whatever that sap, that stuff is flammable. I mean, yeah. that's like, it's like that, gas. Yeah, it works. So yeah. I mean, that that was pretty nice to be able to to start up a fire and do that sort of stuff on day six, morning day six. But so we camped like twenty yards from this the edge of this burn. Mm-hmm. So we were on the edge, which probably looking back probably wasn't the place to be because that's probably where the animals were kind of doing their their thing on yeah. that edge. But so we camped right in it. But so we were did below. Those, we were below a little like dip. Yeah, and uh, but there was also like evidence of like horses and people being in there pretty recently. Yeah, pretty recently. So we didn't because when we got there the first day, we saw two horse trailers there. Yeah, yeah. which with where the terrain was, they were probably going all the way back. Would be right. my guess is they probably camped right where we were, and I think that's why we didn't see anything in that area. But also, we weren't really glassing to fully grasp what we should have seen maybe in right. there because glassing was not on our radar at all throughout this trip which is something that we're totally changing yeah because i think that glassing is gonna is is like you're letting your eyes do a lot of the work that your your legs and your body aren't paying for and yeah you're probably going to do about the same vertical elevation and same distance but you're going to do it more intermit- intermittently mm-hmm. because you're going to have like two hours of glassing and then two hours of hiking, two hours of glass, two hours right. of hiking, and you're gonna like be able to stop and sit still, maybe have a cup of coffee and kind of calm down a little bit, and then put your eyes on more animals that way. Even if they are far away, it just gives you the opportunity to well, get. Well, now you know where they are. Yeah, you're not just wandering around. Yeah, so you can get in that. You can get within a few, you know, uh, like 400 yards of them. You know, at some point in time throughout that day, or maybe the next day, and, yeah. or you know where to glass again, get closer, and kind of. And, and make some stocks or, or something or go in and call because that's what ended up working really well for us. But so day four goes along. We follow this trail up to a beautiful lake. I mean, beautiful. The ol- one of the only things I regret on this trip besides like certain gear items and stuff, well, I guess it's technically another gear item, was my fly fishing pole because I would have loved to have taken some trout out of there and cooked them up. Because yeah. we were hungry at this time, our food we we talked about it before. Our food was not cutting it. We just we weren't having the quality of food. It just got gross at the end. Yeah, and we didn't like it, and so that was a big problem for us. So, and also this is not knowing that I did have a grouse tag in my pocket. Gosh. I know this this makes Luke furious, and I am to blame for this. I didn't <laughs> realize that Montana came with the small games tag when you buy an elk tag. It comes with a fishing license and a small games tag. Dude, 
I would, if I would have known that, I would have shot like seven grouse, <laughs> and we would have just ate those grouse. I mean, they were everywhere. Yeah. And I would have been all about it, yeah. you know, and and taking that up there and and eating those and cooking them over a fire. That would have been awesome, and a good way to replace, you know, a lot of the nasty foods we were eating and stuff. Yeah. But um, I did have a fishing license, so I was thinking about you know catching fish, but I didn't. I, I forgot my pole, and um, and I really wish I didn't because that was pretty. That was a very pretty lake, and super you, pretty. Most people aren't fishing that just because of the location. That's like the best thing I've seen in my life. Yeah, that it's lake. Beautiful. I mean, it was clear, clear, clear. I mean, crystal clear. Yeah, blue water. Oh, it was beautiful. Well, if you look at my Instagram, you can see some of those pictures. But we'll probably drop um that picture as like the thumbnail for this yeah. and for the podcast um for this one but it was beautiful so we're like going up and around um this lake just kind of in awe the sun finally came out it's warming us up we're like we're starting to, we're feeling good like it's yeah. like this is the best day so far yeah we're starting to feel really good and going from day five into that was yeah nice. and we started seeing elk sign like yep. true elk sign and it just started to feel right and and it was starting to go well and then the icing on the cake at the start of the day was we when we looked up and like 200 yards away we saw mountain goats yeah so white mountain goats, white mountain goats just on the and you know being a kid from illinois Seeing, you know, deer, white-tailed deer and raccoons all my life, basically, is all we got here and turkeys, you know, which are great. But it's like, man, mountain goats are just, you know, I never, I, I knew eventually I would see one, but I never understood that it would be like that, you know. Yeah. I mean, they were on a steep, just mountainside grazing around, and they were bright white. I mean, they were cool. That was the coolest thing. Yeah, they were some neat some neat just like creatures to watch them and they're just they look so interesting and just where they live i mean that's probably the the least steep area that they've that they live you know mm -hmm. where they were because we could have climbed where to where they were yeah but they probably lived up further on that bluff yeah you know during the nights and stuff like that and it was it was just cool to see them you know I, I, there was probably i think there was five of them mm -hmm. about five so we start you know, walking around this lake further, those mountain goats kind of move off behind some uh, trees and stuff. And we make the executive decision to to climb through this saddle into the other ravine, another big area. Because we weren't finding, you know, we were calling and there wasn't anything answering us. And so we kind of went behind this lake and made just like a big circle around it because on mm -hmm. the backside of the lake was where... We had to go up and over yeah. into that saddle. And when we got on the backside of the lake in that little steeper area, that was north-facing slope. Man, there was just a lot of sign. Dude, there was sign everywhere. I mean, tracks. You could just kind of see beds. And, I yeah. mean, like, you knew there was elk in there. And it was it had that grass mm -hmm. all up in there. Like, that was good feed. So you knew they were eating up there. And then we climbed through the saddle, which that climb was a little steep. A little rough. That was a little bit steep, but it felt better than day twos. Yeah, yeah, it definitely did. It was, it was at a good, it was at a good pitch. I mean, you, it's an armor you could kind of see, like it felt more open up there. So yeah, you could kind of see, like, all right, there's where I'm going. There's the top of the mountain. Day yeah. two, it just felt like, uh, who knows when we'll stop climbing? Like, yeah, because there's just, just trees. Yeah, yeah, no, we could see where we were going. Yeah, that so helped a lot. We get up to the saddle, and hands down, the best. Oh. The best view. I'm mean, it's just incredible. It was. I mean, there's a TikTok. There's some um, uh, reels of us. The, the video where we just turn the camera on the phone camera around, and I mean, you're just you're just looking for miles. Gorgeous. I mean, just at the. I mean, we were in a we were in an amazing spot. I think at that we're at like nine thousand is right. is where we were there, and um, and below us when we look down. There's just a nice, beautiful meadow. There is you. You get even further, and there's like a big ravine with a bigger meadow down in the yeah. bottom. Yeah, that was pretty too. Then it goes up to another side, and you can see that there's a lake back there. Beautiful. And you, it's just, I mean, honestly, so all, cool. 
all things aside, we should have been to that spot on day one. Yeah. Or day two. Day two. You know, like camped five miles in and then hoofed it all the way back, get up there and glass. Yeah. And get up there to glass in the mornings before light and then in the evenings till dark. Yeah. Because there was there was sign um, all throughout that area. And in that saddle, we could have looked both ways and listened and we may not have heard something, but just the amount of like area we could have, we saw, we could see in that saddle was, I mean, we were co- we could have covered a lot of ground, yeah, with our binoculars, yeah, and that's where I think that, that glassing would just help. Is just that's get, where the bigger sea knock bags would come into, so you don't have to. Dude, I can't imagine going back down to that lake for water. No, and bringing it back up. There. It would not be fun. I'm, I'm switching to we had we had. Two two liters. Mm-hmm. I'm switching to two three liters. Yeah, because there. I think the more times that we spend glassing, the more we're gonna want to have water up top. Yeah. So, I want to be able, and I'm gonna. I switch from the platypus to the smart water bottles, like Luke had. Much smarter idea. I wouldn't personally go with the bladder again, because, you know, I can get three liters. You know, which is the same amount as what my bladder had with two smart water bottle, um, in my smart water bottles in my pack. But like, just being able to like have that clean water ready to pour out into a cup in a jet boil, or use it to brush your teeth, and like instead of like having to siphon it out of your yeah out of your uh, platypus bladder into a bucket or bowl or something, it was just so much nicer and handier. Be like, hey, Luke, grab, hand me your water bottle so I can, you know, pour it out yeah. real quick. So I would do that, and that was that was really good. Um, so I switched over, so I can get nine liters of water fully loaded up with um, two one and a half liter um, smart water bottles and two three liter Cnoc bags. I can get nine liters of water, which gets me two and a half three days. Yeah, like I could I could take a bunch of water it doesn't because especially the way i consume water it doesn't i don't need that much but i remember just luke decided we get up we got up there luke's tired we haven't slept really good any of the nights no um because it's just different sleeping on one of those pads and it's weird and so we weren't sleeping that well so luke decided to sleep in the saddle like lay down and Take a nap. I set up my little tent fly that was still wet to like dry out in the wind, and I laid down. I used a rock as a pillow. <laughs> yeah, so he it did that. Felt amazing. <laughs> yeah, he did that, and um, I went out to do some glassing, um, which I didn't know what I was doing, but I, you know, was just kind of checking things out and looking around, doing some glassing, and uh, and I was just sitting up in this because I I climbed what I climbed maybe another. 50 foot up or probably 100 yeah 100 foot up just kind of zipped up maybe i was probably only about 70 yards away from you yeah and i uh i got up in this rock and just kind of sat there and was just looking and using my zolio and texting people and just saying hey how's it going and all that sort of stuff and and looking through the glass and um so it's like an hour hour and a half Mm -hmm. and i just kind of see luke down there move around and pack up his stuff and and like walk up my way without his pack on and i'm like i'm facing one direction basically i'm only looking one direction and uh and luke comes up to me and he goes hey uh there's a there's a pretty dark cloud behind you and i'm gonna let you pick up from here yeah so the plan was we were gonna camp in the saddle and then descend into the basin the next day with hopes of glassing or calling or hearing something which even at first I was like I don't know about that man, but I, it was like all right okay like it was a nice day like he said and you had texted I think it was your dad like said there like there shouldn't have been any more rain coming or something and I wake up from this nap and my tent flies like blowing all over this tree behind me and I look up and there's a dark cloud so I was like oh man like that don't look good so I came up to Drake I was like hey yeah, there's you know there's cloud coming over that mountain. <laughs> and you're like, oh, like you know, yeah, whatever, whatever. I'm sure it's fine. It's just a dark cloud. Like, it'll be, it'll be fine. So I sit up there with him, probably like, what ten, yeah, minutes, ten, fifteen minutes. And I look back and I'm like, dude, 
we got to get off this mountain. Like, it's like, coming. It is bad. It's like, yeah, when you see there's storms on the on the forecast, and like, it's been cloudy all day, and then you see, like, the cloud, like, coming yes. for you. Like, scary. Because yes. it's, like, cresting a mountain, too. And we're like, I mean, it's just rock. There's nothing up here. Exactly. So we had to, I was like, we got to move. And that's when you realize, like, yeah, we got to move. <laughs> yeah, and so the thing is, is, like, out there, it might say there's no thunderstorms or or anything, but the radar isn't necessarily super reliable out there because it just pops up. It comes out of yeah. they, they form out of nowhere, and that's what happened here at this one. And when I basically turned to Luke and said, oh, "Okay, like it's time to get out of here," it was like we made it down to the saddle because we kind of went back yeah. down, and then there was like one drop of rain, and we're like, "Oh, by the, yeah." By the time we were clipping our hip belts in it was like like one wind drop. was here yeah one drop like oh gosh like we got to get out of here yeah so the other side where the <laughs> new basin that we were going down to was not as steep as the one we just came out of but it was still it was still steep it was still steep but there was like this is the area in which elk had moved through yeah they so had like, like a little trail kind of thing they had a well paved out trail in that in that sense yeah and um and the wind starts picking up, and we start moving, moving like way too irresponsibly fast down yep. this, down this, um, this hill or hill mountain. mountain. And I knew it was irresponsible. We were still like we're trying not to get wet because we got our trekking poles, and we're like you know just trying to get off the mountain. Yeah, and um, I'm not. I don't have my trekking pole. I have my bow in my hand because mm, I always have my right. bow in my hand. Yeah. So I'm. In front of You're Luke, in front of me. and I'm moving pretty quick. And I don't remember if it was like a rock slipped out from under my foot, or I just lost my balance or something. But I go end over end, like you went down hard, hard, like really hard. And it looked like you landed right on your one like knee. And I thought like, oh, that's it. Like yeah. I'm gonna have to carry him out. I didn't think you'd be able to like get back up after that one. yeah the way it looked and it the looked w- bad yeah because well, you got a 60 pound pack on your back too. yeah and i did land on my knee like it, it yeah. we, there was blood oh yeah you busted it there, up. i busted my knee up but like the way i landed i can only imagine what it looked like to you because it looked it had to look like i shattered my knee oh yeah it looked like you just yeah i thought just, you, i thought exactly that i thought yeah. you shattered your kneecap because i mean i didn't it wasn't just falling on the ground like i fell and moved like i went like probably you just get it yeah how, much, how far do you think i went like at least six feet yeah i mean it was it was a good little dun, 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 and i kind of like caught myself down there luckily i didn't go any further yeah my bow got launched out of my hands, which luckily it didn't mess up anything with the sight or anything like that. We looked at it and nothing got jolted out. But I turned back around and got up and I had to like kind of brush my knees off and like kind of stand there for a little bit because my leg was like numb because like, it was yeah. like it hit hard. And we were like, oh, well, about that time, rain starts to get a little pick up a little bit more Remember seeing it on the rocks all around us like yeah when you're on pavement you can see it hit the concrete yeah and it starts picking up a little bit more so like now i'm like hobbling down you got up mountain. you got up and moving fast i was like oh my gosh like are you okay are you fine? you're like yeah i'm, I'm good i'm gonna yeah. start like doing yeah pulling an old man down the mountain <laughs> yeah i started hobbling down the mountain because i'm like i don't like being wet and that's something that i've always hated <laughs> i don't I don't like being wet. I don't like water. I don't like sweating. I don't like. I don't like being wet, and and this rain was just like ominously coming. Yeah. So I'm like hobbling, and uh, and we go down this. We go down a ways because we're yeah. trying to find flat ground, and none of these spots are flat, and uh, so we go down quite a ways, and we ended up getting in at like this this spot that was probably what do you say probably. 200 yards from that meadow or was it probably closer a little closer yeah it wasn't that far which no looking back we shouldn't have gotten that close to it we couldn't but we get anywhere else we didn't have an option and we couldn't really quickly go back towards the storm down in the same area in which we went because right. that was steep too we could have found a spot but it was still steep so we set up and we get we get our tents set like onto the ground and it's at this point in time 
when just the ceiling drops out in this storm. The floodgates were open. Yeah, it just starts going down. And so we're setting up our tents. And this is kind of where we noticed a, a problem with our tents. This is the big, big problem of, of the tents that we had. So for the Nemo Hornet Elite 2 person and the Chinese... Amazon major hike, yeah. cloud up one p, yeah, whatever, <laughs> whatever it was, that tent or both those tents. What you had to do is you had to put the ground sheet down first, the inner tent, and then the rain fly in that order. Ground yep. sheet, inner tent, rain fly. Well, when it's raining, what that does is allows put your ground sheet. And yeah, your ground sheet gets wet, and then you put down the inner tent. Your inner tent, and gets the inner wet. tent gets wet, and then you put on your rain and you fly. Put on rain fly, which has effectively not done anything because everything's already wet. Yeah, so the inside of your tent's already wet. Now it's not like standing water, but it's just enough to get everything wet. Like when just, you're already wet from the rain. <laughs> yeah, you can't go in there and dry off because if you take your boots off, like if your socks somehow survived, well now they're wet. because yeah. of what's in your tent. Yeah, so everything's wet. And that's why I switched to Cimarron because I can throw the tin out, put it on the ground, yeah, and that's my rain fly. Put the pole up, and then that ground is dry, and then I just throw in my Tyvek yeah. that's also dry. So I can keep it, you know, I put the rain fly up and then put the stuff inside. Yeah. And it has more room for gear, so you're not, your gear isn't touching the outside of your tent and getting wet because... Water comes in, even if you have a double wall tent, water comes in six to seven inches under your tent because of just the way the angles yeah. go. And everything from like six, seven, eight inches from the outside of your fly and your vestibule space, that ground gets soaked in about that much. Yeah. About eight inches probably. Somewhere in there. So being like having a bigger tent further away from the walls. So when that does soak in a little bit, you have that space, and that's important. Yeah. And that's what we didn't have. Right. So kind of pick up from there. Yeah. So we we pitch our tents, and we get inside of them. And it's like I'm assessing everything because keep in mind, I didn't have the inner tent. I brought my rain fly and my ground sheet, and my rain fly ends about five inches before the ground. So, like, there's rain, like, kind of, like, almost touching my ground sheet and my ground sheet is about four inches five inches on either side of my pad yeah so you took the inner tent out of your tent right exactly i don't have the side wall to kind of keep rain off so i'm i'm on my knees in my tent just assessing thing my pack's in front of me my pack's soaked my my pant i'm soaked because i had to put my tent up in the rain and you're in your tent fixing stuff I'm, i'm on my knees assessing like like how do i get my my boots off without getting everything wet like how do I put how do I put my pad and my quilt down without just getting soaked? And it's at this point, I'm still on my knees, that hail starts falling. Yeah. And like quite like quite not big hail, but like a lot of it. Probably pea size. Pea size. Pea size hail. But it was like like the ground's white. Yeah. Like it's falling. It looks like snow is on the ground. Yeah. 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 And it's bound like there's hail in my tent because there's there's no sidewall. So it is hitting the ground, and anything that hits the ground next to my tent is bouncing off and coming inside. And melting. And melting, yeah. So my tents are, yeah, because it's not super cold at this point. It's chilly, but it's not cold. So my tent was already wet. I'm already soaked. And now, like, if I put my quilt down, my quilt's going to be covered in melted hail. So I'm like, I I can't I can't do this. Because yeah. if I get my quilt well, I'm out of, I'm, I'm out of luck. Yeah, because it's a down quilt. Yeah, it's a down and, quilt. And they don't, you just... You yeah. lose all everything. I just I don't have any room that's dry at all. My yeah. whole tent's soaked out and it's getting worse. So from my perspective, I'm in my tent and I I am I am in my tent and I hear Luke in his tent and <laughs> Luke's in his tent going, Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> this isn't good, like speaking to himself and like, uh oh. I was so <laughs> he was just I think I, I remember saying that. I remember saying, uh oh. Uh, yeah, he's just over there and I hear him just like kinda like moaning and mumbling over in his tent and I'm like, Is everything good over there? Because I'm I'm in my knee I'm on my knees like holding myself yeah. together like in the middle of my tent, <laughs> just shivering and just soaked and watching everything get more soaked. <laughs> like my tent didn't help at all. Yeah, so I, I'm i like, are you okay over there? And he's like, 
no. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I'm like, I'm like, what's going on? He's like, well, my everything's soaked. I'm wet. Things bouncing in. And I'm like, well, if you need to come into my tent, like you can come into my tent. And he, at first he's like, no, I'll be good. There was a long yeah, pause. He's like, no, I'll be good. I'll, I'll be fine over here. And then like three minutes later, you're like, yep, I'm coming into your tent. And so, and like, we're like, our tents are five foot away from each other but yeah. we're shouting because hail hitting this tent so like i mean like yeah it's loud, loud real loud yeah so we're like yelling at each other and uh and so i i asked i was like i asked him like three minutes later i was like hey are you sure he's always nope i'm coming into your tent and so like i'm rocking a two-person tent which means one, one. person one person. especially with that nemo yeah especially the smallest two-person tent i've ever seen ever seen like it was it was tight with just me in the tent yeah and so, <laughs> yeah. so Luke, Luke, like I, I, I'm waiting and I'm like, all right, you know, whenever you come out of this thing, yell and I'm going to unzip the vestibule and you run in and grab, like, grab some of my gear and throw it in your tent. Yeah. We, we, we got out your like jet boil and your food and like something yeah. else. And like, we were going to put both of the packs in my tent, but we can't just move everything over. Cause it's still pouring hail, like yeah. actual hail and rain and it's, rain. Yeah. Mixed. So you did you put on your 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 jacket your rain jacket I had it on you had it on I was so, just soaked yeah. yeah he was just soaked anyway so he he was just he shuttled a lot of my gear out of my vestibule and moved it into his tent because we wouldn't have been able to fit him in there without right. having a little bit because we I mean we're like if he got in there we're extending the walls out of like we're push we're both touching the side walls of this of this tent oh well I got I brought my sleeping pad and my quilt we could not fit two sleeping pads in the tent. Yeah. Touch like my sleeping pad, there is I think two or three inches that were underneath the edge of your thermorest. Yes. That's how small the tent is. Regular, I don't think you're like they're not the wide version, right? I got the wide version, but the, the climate the climate's not. N- uh you had the twenty three. You had the twenty three wide one. Twenty three. So, so I had a twenty five inch wide sleeping pad and you had a twenty three inch wide sleeping so pad. So fifty inches. Yeah. And uh, well, I mean, less than that, but yeah, less than that. And I can't imagine like if you measured both of our shoulders, like shoulder to shoulders. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fifty inches. Yeah, so we're like in this tent, and like so he gets in there finally. We put that down. We put his his sleeping bag or his sleeping quilt down, and we we have mine and his on both sides. It's the whole bottom of this is just sleeping a pad. sleeping pad. There's no extra no, anything. There's no room anywhere. So. And mind you, we're still technically somewhat in bear country, <laughs> and and we so, just didn't. We just forgot about that. Yeah, like at this point in time, we didn't care. It no. seemed like anymore, but so we're still kind of technically in bear country, <laughs> and our jet boil and food is in our vestibule. <laughs> Not only that, we put, <laughs> we cooked inside of the tent. Oh yeah, like we we cooked. It, like inside of you the tent. You held the jet ball between your legs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We held it. So I have a video. It's, I'm like sitting with my legs over your legs. Yes. Like <laughs> we are crotch to crotch. Like couples yoga deal. We <laughs> crotch to crotch. Jet boil just, <laughs> just inside of this tent. Yeah. I mean, we, we are literally like, our, my crotch is, basically touching the jet boil and his crotch is touching the other side of the jet boil like we have our legs in like a diamond formation over each other and we're just sitting there like looking at each other <laughs> in the in the eyes and like when i say in the eyes i mean like he is maybe his <laughs> eyes are, he's maybe six inches from my face like his eyes and my eyes are like a total of six inches apart and we're just looking at each other as the hail's coming down <laughs> Just so loud, and just deafening, wet, and we're yeah. Our pants are wet, our socks are wet, our quilts are kind of wet at this point. Yeah, like, we're just looking at each other and we're just laughing, dude. We're just we're just cracking. I have so I have videos on from uh, Snapchat, old Snapchat yeah. videos of us just dying laughing. My hair is like in a rat's nest at the time because I had the mullet. Wild, yeah, and uh, and so we were just laughing and like honestly, I. That was funny. That was a part of the trip that I don't want to repeat. No. But it was like, 
of course that happened, you know? Of course, the day, like, day five, the most miserable day, and then day six starts out, it gets sunny, we go to the most beautiful views we've ever seen, we've seen mountain goats, we get up on the mountain, we take a nap in the sun, and then literal actual hail. Yeah, like, like a thunder, a high <laughs> alpine thunderstorm that happened instantaneously that no one saw on the radar. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, and so, like, we're, like, scrambling, so we're just, like, it went from, like, everything ever that the trip should have started out and wanted to be to back down into like the mentally breaking section of the of the episode yeah. again. And so we sit there and we eat our food. We just put our empty and dirty dishes <laughs> in like literally in our vestibule. In the <laughs> yeah, in the vestibule. Like we're, we're like if a bear comes, he's getting a two for one special because me just, and Luke yeah. are right there. And then so we set up our quilts and and we're like shoulder blade to shoulder blade, but I, I remember parts of the night and stuff. We're like I would like I, I would like turn over because I, I like cross a turn, and I would turn over, and Luke's face and my face would be like nose to nose, and I'd be like nope, and I turn back I turn back over, so like. We would just, <laughs> I would just be like looking at you. Do you remember waking up in the morning? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I would just wake up and I and I'd wake like, up in the morning. We open our eyes and we're like looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were like, we, we I just, had my quilt over my nose so all you could see is my. Eyes. Yeah, and I'm like, me and him, we just wake up and we're like, we're face to face. I'm like basically underneath him. Yeah. My sleeping pad's like halfway underneath his sleeping. I mean, pad. we're we're like we're 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 full on, like in almost a cuddling position at yeah. this point. Like it's like this is how close it was, and it was like this is where you got to pick your your backcountry buddies, yeah. right? Because not everyone's gonna survive this, and um and we 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 tried to make a promise that we'd never talk about this, but here we yeah, are. Yeah, I was gonna say this is coming out. Like, yeah, no. I so I didn't think this was supposed to be <laughs> publicized. This is the unspeakable man. <laughs> no, but I mean, we wake up, we're looking in each other's souls, and I'm like, okay, let's uh, get out of the tent. Let's get out of this tent. <laughs> and so we like we shimmy out immediate fire. Uh, yeah, because we also figured out both of our quilts' foot boxes had been slammed up against the end of the little condensation machine all night long. Yeah, <laughs> so our quilts are just soaked. Yeah, no, like they're. That's one thing about the Nemo that I had problems with the whole time is like, yeah, it's a double wall tent, supposedly condensation free, this, that, whatever. No, like, no, there was more condensation in that tent than there was rain outside our tent by the time, <laughs> yeah. by the time we were done that night. And so, like, if you like touch the outer the rain fly, which was easy to do because <laughs> there was no room in that tent, you just got wet. I mean, it, like you bumped. It's like uh, when you. When you're a kid and you're like, it's the summer rain, you know, and you like shake one of the little trees and, and yeah. all the rain comes off. That's it's like that. That was the inside of my tent. If and you like I, flick the wall, you just get soaked. Yeah. Every time I would unzip the <laughs> unzip the vestibule, it would just like rain on me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this sucks. So we immediately go and start a fire because we're like, we got to dry out. I know. I'm about to throw, <laughs> you, I'm about to throw you under the bus so bad. So we, we, we're hanging. I'm about to throw you under the bus. We hang up. All of our, all of our uh, stuff, our quilts, our our sleeping bags, our rain flies, our socks, our boots, everything is just sitting there. We're sitting on our Tyvek, um, and we're just we're making food, we're heating things up, and all of our stuff is just in a circle around us. And so you know we're cold, so Luke's trying to like warm us up. And so what he's doing is he's over there with, like, I don't know what he had, but he has some, like, stick or log or his hands, and he is, like, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego-ing this fire. And, like, there's, like, we have thousands of dollars of just gear, like, around, and it's, like... He's like bonfiring this up with like flames and well, ash. Well, I didn't think it was gonna go because everything's wet. Yeah, I was so, just trying to make a fire. So he, no, this is after. Come on, don't try to weasel your <laughs> way out of this. He is. There's ash and fire just flying everywhere, <laughs> and it's like 
directly like the the nearest <laughs> the nearest item is my quilt. And he like he I I get there and he's like fanning it and I'm just watching literally like a thousand <laughs> embers hit my quilt. And and then I just see some like duck feathers. Yeah, there's our quilts right there. Mine mine's like this Yours one. Yours is like yeah, four foot. <laughs> yeah. And then I just see some duck feathers like floating floating, floating in the air and I look over and there's like like three pinholes in my quilt where this where like the fires just I mean just zapped them went right through and so like I was like oh crap so then I like start taking things down and like Luke stop blowing on the fire because this thing's like sending hell fires <laughs> into my quilt and and so we're laughing about that I ended up getting them sewed up but but like so yeah our quilts got burnt um luckily no rain flies got burnt through but like we were we were so we were firing that up and then i think this is when is this the who who dow or was before it? i was just starting the fire oh okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah so you can tell so that. we got out of the tent quickly in the morning and we went to that wallows that you mentioned it was like 150 yards yeah. 100, between 100 and 200 yards away we got water, and I was like, I'm going to go back and make a fire. He's like, okay, sweet. I'm going to go this way, which is, you know, a couple hundred yards to the right, and he's going to look at for sign or something, and then he's like, I'll meet you back over there. So I start running around these woods, scraping pine tar together and trying to find dry sticks. I do that for, like, probably, like, 20 minutes. Like, it was a long time. I left I was... my bow. That's what it was. I think I left my bow. No, because I got your bow. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. remember. I brought it to yeah, my yeah, tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I'm like, all right, well, like, I will guess I'll have a fire going by the time it gets back. So I'm, like, starting this fire, like, getting it all, like, I get it all fixed up, and you're still not there. I'm like, where is this dude at? Like, like, and it's like, we're at, like, the 25-minute mark Yeah, now. like, it's been a while. And it, it's like, we were close. Like, our camp was pretty close. Yeah. It wasn't like you had to go over a ridge or anything. Like, it was just right there in the middle. I'm like, where is this guy at? <laughs> and I hear, off like, 75 yards in the wrong direction. I hear, whoo, 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 whoo. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> only owl. owl. <laughs> And it's like 10 a.m. at this point <laughs> in Montana. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I said, Drake, I'm not doing that. I'm over here. Yeah, so like he just yells like in prime elk habitat. <laughs> and I was trying to be discreet, which I guess it wasn't discreet when these elk have probably never heard. Never an, heard an owl. Like ever that. heard an owl before. But like that's the only thing I knew how to do. And it made me feel okay, but it was like it was. It had to be so blatantly obvious because there was like little birds, and but it was really quiet. There was and, hardly anything out there. Yeah. yeah, and then you just hear this owl just sounding off, oh, 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 you know, just going nuts. And he's like, <laughs> "Drake, I'm over here." And so like I hear him, and I like walk to him. And the thing was is like I forgot to drop a pin at camp yeah, on my on X, lost, and I just was wandering about. In well, the you woods. found the trail, didn't you? Because we were right off the trail. No, I didn't even. I didn't find that. I just kind of was like wandering okay. around, just and it was all that. Minutes. We got a dog. Hey, ha, El Bale. You can join us. Oh, 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 oh. Come up here. Oh, yeah. Come here. Come up here. Get up there, dog. No. Go. Go, 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 go. There you go. All right, lay down. Yeah. None of this licking my face stuff. Oh, Whoa. and all she's right. on you. All right. Well, now Ellie has joined the podcast. But yeah, so we're we 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 meet up. We I watch him burn my quilt, <laughs> and then and then we 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 pack up. We start to get ready to go, and we're back. I mean, we're back twelve miles. Yeah, and where this like meadow is, like this pretty open meadow. There's some. There's like five wallows. Oh, look at him. He's taking pictures. There's like five wallows, and uh, so there's elk sign everywhere. Like there is elk sign. Everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, it's crazy. And we're we're kind of like hiking around. We're looking in valleys and all that's All of a sudden, Luke hears like an elk call, like an elk bugle. And I'm like, he's like, did you hear that? I'm like, no, because I can't hear. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I still got that water behind my ears and I, I, just, I can't hear nothing. And he's like, 
well, there it goes again. Did you hear it? And I'm like, no, I did not. You're, you're, you're deaf. We're, there's nothing over there. And he's like, I think there's something over there. And at that time, I think I heard a, like the off end or something mm-hmm. high pitch. And I was like, maybe there's something. So we cut down through this. But yeah. You ended up hearing it. Yeah. Right when we got to the edge yeah. of that meadow, I think you ended I up ended hearing, up hearing something, but it yeah. w- I didn't end up hearing what you were hearing. Like, you heard it clear as day. I heard, like, ee, and I was like, <laughs> I, I don't, I guess. So, but I was trusting you. So, we cut down through the bottom, and I and I trusted you also because there was so much elk sign around. Yeah. So, I was like, there's got to be something around. So, we cut through this bottom, and this bottom is probably, I don't know, probably 500, 500 foot elevation change, and then... You have probably about 200 yards of this bottom, and then it went up pretty steep, significantly. Yeah, we went down kind of like climb. We went down kind of like a seep. Remember that, like yeah. where, where it was kind of like yeah, seep we were and, walking in the water. Yeah, we were. It was kind of like a seep. That was like the 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 least elevated part. You know, we kind of zipped up that way. We get up there, and we don't hear a call. Mm-mm. We don't hear any call. So we're walking around. We zip up and down. We we make a call. Um, we get to a far area and, um, we walk along this, where that kind of like that ravine was Mm -hmm. and it kind of gets steeper and steeper and steeper until it turns into like an actual drop drop off and, uh, where you couldn't go down. So we sit and eat our lunch on this drop off, just overlooking everything. (laughs) And (laughs) we're, we hear it again. Yeah. It's like after, right after we were done with lunch, we hear it in the exact same spot that we were just at. Yeah, and we're like, "Are you kidding me? Like this? Yeah. Is, this is dumb." So we pack up, we redo the whole thing, we drop down, cut back up, we walk to the edge of that meadow, and we're hearing it. And and at this point, I'm actually hearing it. Yeah. But as we get closer, we're like, that "That's not a. Right. That's not an elk. You know, that's a human." Yeah. So we get to the edge of this field or this this meadow, and I pull out the binos, and there's some guy, and it's like we could tell when we were getting up there that it wasn't an elk because it was like a flutey. Yeah. Like he was do using a different call. My call sounded really good. It sounded really good. But like – He had like a, one of the tubes. Yeah, he had, like a, he had like a tube, and it was really – oh, there she goes. It was really like flutey, and we didn't – yeah, she just – hair and everything. But, yeah, it was real flutey, and – it didn't work. Like, his call just didn't sound that great. So, anyways, we end up, like, waving him on, and he sees us, and we walk over to him. And this is the first person we've seen, like, out here in a few days. Yeah. So, we're, like, chatting him up. <laughs> and he's sitting down on the edge of this field with his glass out, and he's glassing. He's just chilling. Yeah, just doing his thing. And he was he said he would – he had camp at about the five mile mark mm-hmm. and i think from exactly where he was sitting was like 11 miles deep so he's like six miles from camp so he's got to leave uh at like five thirty at six o'clock in order to get back to his camp for because he's not walking in the right. dark is what he said so it's about four thirty when we meet up with him and he's glassing up on this east facing slope so not where we came from and not where we were at on the other two opposite sides, but the east-facing side that was right there. So we came over and descended the south-facing slope. Yeah. And then in the morning, we went up on the north-facing slope and chasing that one, and we came back down to the center, and now he's glassing the east-facing slope. Yeah, and he was glassing that east-facing slope, and he goes, well, there's two elk up there, and we're like, what are you talking about, dude? We've been here doing our thing. Like, come on. And he pulls up his bio. And he's like, yep, there's just two, you know, mulling around. There's, I think that's a, a little bull and a cow. And I'm like looking up and I think I see it. You see it. You said you saw it. Like, you, you know where he's talking about. You saw it move or something. I'm having troubles. I saw it move, but I couldn't pick it up. Yeah. So I'm having trouble seeing it with the binos even. And he's seeing it just fine because he's a Western hunter and he's done this before. Yeah. And we're just not. And so we we, we kind of chat there with him for like probably, what, 30 minutes or so? Yeah. And I look at him and like 
to get up to this spot with the way you have to go in it's order rough. yeah in order for the elk not to see you you had to go on the side of it you couldn't have gone straight at the elk because it would have seen you coming down you had to cut up the side basically rock climb and then come down on the bull from the top and that's the way the thermals were going at that time is it was blowing uphill yet still and it was about 5 30 um four like five o'clock when we started and anyways so we we asked him we go hey dude are you gonna go for that like because if you're not going for that do you mind if we go for it yeah and this guy was super nice he was like dude I'm not going up there for that little bull. That's what well, he had been there a while, and the the bull wasn't, like, coming down or anything. Yeah. He's like, I'm not climbing that, and it's too small for me to go after or something. So he's like, oh, you guys have it. Yeah, and he because he's been calling for a while trying to see if he could get that bull to, to drop, like, a like I don't know. I think he, he was trying to get it to drop, like, about, like, yeah. like, 800 feet or something like that. It was, I mean, it was up there. So me and you, like, pack up the gear and, like, you might not go up for that little bull, but we're going up for the little bull. Yeah. And uh, so we cut around the side. We dropped our packs. We dr- yes, we dropped stashed our, them at a tree. Stashed them at a tree, and then we walk straight or like we hike around, and we basically rock climb, like a forty degree slope, to get up on the side of this thing. And when we cut, we cut across and pop over the head or the edge of this. And just get right into like some smaller shrubs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And it's about this time we get up there. We're like, all right, you ready? I knock an arrow, get everything. It's like he's got to be within like 150 yards from this spot, just kind of where we. I have my Onyx pin, so I call, and immediately, yeah, immediately this thing bugles right back at me, and I'm like, dude. There's a bugle. Like, it's the first one. Like, I can actually hear it. It's right there. You know, that sort of thing. And I, I, I saw the confusion in your eyes when I turned to you. And I'm like, he's about 150 yards away. And yeah. you're like, no. You're like, no. I'm like, are you crazy? He's like 150 yards away. So I set up. I give him another call. Immediate. And immediate. And he's closer than what he was. I'm like, okay, he's probably like 100, 120. You're and thinking he was off another direction slightly, yeah, too. Yeah, a little off and down uh, down a valley. Like I said, I was having bad ear problems. Yeah. And you're like, no. like he's. I said, he's right he's here. He's right he's there. He's right here. And and I'm in my head, I'm, I'm like, I've got time. So I've been thinking about, like, pulling my bow back, keeping – calm breathing making sure i i focus on the pins and about that time this 800 pound elk just pokes up the ridge at 30 yards and looking directly at me and this is when i lose all composure that i ever had all the breathing and going out the wind or like you know focusing on a pin everything's out the window yeah and so this thing I mean, it feels like he stared at me for an hour, but maybe 30 seconds is all he st- stared oh, at Oh, it me. wasn't even that. Yeah, I mean, he he didn't even stare at me that long, but he it felt like an eternity. Yeah. And then he starts walking closer to us, broads- completely broadside. Completely broadside. And he is heading up past us because he thinks that's where that bull elk yeah. was. And... I he comes behind this tree. I pull back. I pull back. Luke says my arrow. I could hear of his arrow bouncing on the rest as it moved back. Yeah. So like I'm shaking. I mean, at a loss. And in this moment, this this thing's probably twenty twenty two yards away from us. And I mean, broadside, perfect, everything what you would want if you were a sensible human being. And I kind of. I pull back. He's walking. I don't stop it. That's the first. That's the first mistake. And I'm riled up. Like I can't see pins. I'm. I put the first. I knew he was close. Put the first pin on him, and basically in the area where I wanted to hit, and boom, and let off the shot. Now I didn't stop him. So as he took that extra shot, or that extra step, my shot went about. Those strides are long, so that my shot went about six to eight inches further back towards kind of like liver, gut, stomach, further back that direction. But it looked like a solid hit. Yeah. Like immediately 
we have the camera footage. I freak out. I'm going nuts. Um, I was shooting single bevel broadheads. Um, it was a cutthroat broadhead, and they're sharpened. Everything was great on them, and I shoot, and I'm excited, but immediately I feel like it was a little back, and and so we go, we we find we see him run up the hill at first, and then he runs down the hill crashing like like yeah go like galloping through through the area and where he ran down was steep like Real I, steep. I thought we were gonna like see him piled up like right on the other side of that because there's well there's that mountain where where we climbed up was on the side and it wasn't really the same but the the front part of that mountain there's the big like um steep part and there's a little cut in and then there's another steep part and then it's kind of like the slope up to the top of the mountain. Yeah. And we were on that kind of, like, where it cuts in and there's a little flat. That's why he popped over that ridge. Yeah. Um, so we were on the flat area. Yeah, that's how we were so close and we didn't see him because he was, I mean, it's like us, 30 yards, a drop-off, and then where he must have been yeah. when we got up there. The drop-off was just a little bit steeper of an angle, but it was, like, it was just down a bit. So that's yeah. why we went there is because we knew we'd be calling him up and he couldn't see us. We were yeah. kind of using the same premise I would use to turkey hunt. Yeah. Um, just calling where they can't see, and when they pop up, they're there. Worked perfectly. Yeah. So I shoot. We get up. We immediately find the arrow. It, like, blew through the elk, went, like, like 30 yards, yeah. stuck in the ground, like, penetration perfect, two holes, or, you know, in this in this bull. But right where he, sh- right where we hit him, there was no blood, nothing, not a drop of blood. And this is where my heart just kind of, just dropped in my stomach. Like I was like, oh, I don't like this at all. These are also the first time I've shot these broadheads and hit an animal and like you know, and done anything. So I'm sitting down, I'm reviewing the footage with Luke, and I just, I know it's back, and it looks like it's double lung, double lung liver, like in that area. And, but it's like, it's high enough, like middle body to where that bull has to fill up with blood. So the middle part of his body, that whole cavity has to fill up before blood will start coming out. And those broadheads, their cutting diameter is only like, there's one blade and it does make an S a little bit of an S, but the one blade's like an inch and an eighth. Like it's pretty tiny. Mm -hmm. You know, those, they're not they look big at first, but like cutting diameter wise, other fixed blades, you know, are, are more of a cutting or better cut. And we're just no blood. And I'm sick. It's not, it was a shot that would have been a ki- easy kill shot with a gun, easy kill shot with maybe an expandable broadhead where we could get some blood off real quick, you know, open bigger hole. Probably would have seen seen some blood and been able to track further, and 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 make make a better call, but we just no blood. So we sit back, we wait. I'm like sick. You're like sick to your stomach. Like I'm about to throw That's up. Sick. The I've never seen you like that. With yeah. Anything. And it was like that's one thing that like it. I didn't catch it in the in the film because I turned off the camera, but like I was like. You were bad. I was I was about to throw up bad. Like yeah. it it was it was pretty bad because I knew that it was like it was a good shot, but just the fact that we didn't have blood, just I knew things weren't going to go well after that. I knew it was going to be difficult. So we wait like forty five minutes. That's all I could wait. I couldn't. I mean, it felt like seven hours. Yeah. The forty five minutes you took like a nap or tried to take like a nap there for a second, and I'm like I can't sit still. Like I'm I'm tired of this. So. We start following the hoof prints because they're big enough that you can follow like their their tracks, mm-hmm. and no blood, no blood. We see kind of where he's stirring up the ground, and then it leads off to the bottom of this hill or this cliff, basically just yeah. straight down. And there's nothing. We review the shot. It looks good, and it should like be a good shot, and it should have blood, but just no blood. And I'm just distraught. So we, we go until almost dark, and then we decide, like, hey, it's time to go back and set up our camp down kind of in the exact same spot that we were and figure this out tomorrow. 
Well, we get down. We hike all the way down. I'm sick again. I'm just like, I'm not feeling good because of it. I set up my, we set up our tent and whatever, and we go to bed. Next morning, it's raining, which anyone who knows anything about blood trailing, rain the next day is not what you want. Any blood that you had gets washed away, anything of the sort. And there wasn't blood anyways to begin with. Yeah. To begin with. So any little bit, you know, was going to be that much more impossible to find. So we get up there at 11 when the rain stops. About, about 10, 10, 30, 11 is when the rain stops. We climb up to the top of that of that hill or that mountain, and I turn on the Onyx tracker, and we just grid. We just grid at the bottom. We grid at the top. We, we grid everywhere. I go down that steep area as far as I could without, like, falling off and grid and grid and grid, and there is no sign of elk, not anything. And we grid for... Total search, we probably did about 10 hours of total searching, and and we just, nothing. And I don't really know what happened. I don't know if that wound healed up and he's not dead, or if he is. So part of me thinks he is. Like a big part of me thinks that that elk's dead somewhere, um, which is horrible. Um, and we decide to get out of there. We pack up. I'm distraught, so I'm. We're deciding to walk, and uh, we had to. We had about a 14 mile walk that day, and we we hike all the way out through deadfall, through everything, through that like marsh. There's stuff. like a marshy thing. We're like soaked. Yeah, our to our knees were soaked, con- like soak soaked. Like there's water in my boots, and we don't care. We get out at 7 p.m. that day, and like 7 8 p.m. we get out we take off our 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 jackets our clothes we change clothes we you know i got there a little like a few minutes earlier like 30 minutes earlier than luke because i guess i wasn't a good partner in this instant i wanted to get out of there by well on the way back is when my body like the bonking bonking out, bonking yeah. out there was no nutrients in my body left so yeah, I just like I went fast for the first. Mm, you kept up twelve miles. No, it would have been the first. It would have been seven. Seven, you did really well. It was when we got to the trail that you started to, you started to hit your your limit. So you did about seven miles with us. Well, I got to the. I I stayed with you till right where we camped on day four. I remember day five or day uh day uh day one and two, and. And day four, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah, day yeah. Day four. Yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. I was with you yes. when we passed that campsite, and then that's when you started pulling away. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So you you made it. You made it about eight eight nine miles out, and then it was like if you've ever seen Mall Cop, where he just like has to have sugar, or he like just passes out on the floor, and he's like shoving M and M's in his mouth. That's Luke. That's like a hundred percent Luke. Like yeah. if he if he runs out of like food, he doesn't like. He's not like me where I just slow down a little bit or, like, I can go throughout a whole day. It's weird. I can go consistently, same speed throughout the whole day, and I don't have to eat anything throughout the whole day. Luke's not like that. Luke has to eat, and it's, like, instant. He eats, boom, he's good. Yeah. He doesn't eat, boom, he's bad. And like, like, yeah. And, like, I think over the course of what, like, the rest of that, that four and a half miles. You gave mile, me some food, didn't you? Yeah, I gave you some of your food, and, like I said, I'm, like, I'm walking. So, like, he bonks the first time, and I give him some food, and he eats it up immediately, ready to go. We start walking, and we this is the first time at about mile uh, nine we hit a trail. Yeah. And this is the trail we've hiked before. And I'm, 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 I put out the, I put the bow on my back, got my trekkers out, and I mean, I'm moving. We saw cows on the way out. Yeah. Heard oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and it was almost going to rain again. <laughs> yeah. So I actually did see another – we did see two cows on the way out. And because I was certain that that bull passed, I I wasn't going to shoot another elk. I didn't feel I didn't feel good about that. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not worrying about it. 
and we were tired. We didn't want to have to pack anything and all that sort of stuff. So, but I just wasn't feeling good. I didn't want to. I didn't want to shoot another animal. Yeah. So, I am walking out, and yeah, it was gonna rain again. So we start moving. We hike. We're moving quick and real uh, quick, real like fast, like three miles an hour ish, probably you know, more. Three, three and a half, four. Yeah, yeah, three and a half, four. Like we're moving. I know my stride out's four, and I was like. Bad, like struggling yeah yeah so we were moving we were, we were moving quick to the back country and uh and i'm moving and i'm in front of luke and i mean i'm spidering like it looks like like a spider yeah. with eight legs with these trekkers i'm i mean i'm going i'm not i'm not stopping for creeks i'm not stopping for if you've seen monsters inc there's the boss guy with like yeah, the spider yeah. crab and remember at one point he busts through the door and he like comes up on the side of the wall yeah and he's like going so fast that's exactly what you looked like with your check and pulls. Just yeah, like, I was moving. bouncing off rocks, just hovering over the ground. And I, I'm, I look over my shoulder and Luke's like twenty yards back by behind me. I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, I'm moving. I look back. He's like forty. I'm, I have my eyes on him. Boom, boom, boom. I don't look back for probably another. Must have been a while. Probably like forty five minutes to an hour. I don't even look back. Like I just, I'm, I'm in the head space. I'm moving. I'm, I'm, I'm going quick. And I turn around. And Luke is nowhere to be found. Gone. Oh, yeah. I didn't care. I was like, all right. Yeah, and I guess at one point in time was... you bonked again. Is that that what happened, or did you just slow down? I just slowed down. Okay. Yeah, so he slowed down, and I basically get to the truck. And I turn around, and Luke's like literally nowhere to be found. And I'm like, oh, no. Because I was like, I wasn't worried necessarily that he was behind me. I was just worried I was going to have to go back in there and get him. I was like, please. Bring some more food. <laughs> please don't bonk out on me. Like, I'm I'm not going back in those woods. And um, so I get there. I take off my the pack. No, no comprehend day. Yeah. We're not going to make that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> was, uh, so I, I get out and... <laughs> um, I'm talk. I take off all my gear. I'm talking to these people from Washington State who are on a on a on an ATV, and I'm saying like, you know, yeah, I have a buddy. He's with me. I don't know where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> I left him back. Left him back in the woods. Around this time, you just see Luke like, <laughs> like just trekkers just coming out of the woods, and I'm like, oh, matter of fact, there he is right there. He's just defeated. He's just. <sighs> You know, like like out of these woods, and I'm dying laughing. You know, just like trying to keep it my composure in front of these other guys. Funny. No, he was <laughs> he was brutally exhausted. And I'm just like, there he is, because I've I've been like getting the truck ready, doing this for like literally thirty minutes, thirty thirty five minutes. Like he's behind me. Like he was like a ways behind me. I I can't believe I I was moving that at that speed in front of you, but you were. You were behind me by a minute or two. And um, so we get out, talk to these guys. We leave, bomb off the mountain. We get into cell reception 45 minutes later. Hundreds of notifications come on our phone. So we're spending time just like. Not me, man. What? I had like 13. Oh, that's right. I had more. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, you had, you were calling. Yeah, 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 telling your dad like, "Hey, we made it out." Blah 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 blah. I'm driving, so I'm not on my phone. And we make it to, we drive out to what? What? What place were we? What? When we finally? I mean, we're, we're we've drove we're driven for a while. We're not in Bozeman at that point. We I think it was Butte. Yeah, it was Butte. Butte. So we we've dri- driven for a while now to get out of this area yeah. and stuff. And we make it to like Butte out there or whatnot. And there is a town pump truck stop and we get out and we're like i think this place has showers because mind you we haven't taken a shower in eight days nine days now yeah nine days rough yeah we're i mean i'm grizzly and like i've got like just patchy hair on my face i just look greasy man. yeah That's and like i'm pins oil i have a i have a mullet at the time and it's like an actual rat's nest yeah. like it's like messed up i smell horrible so we 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 pull into this this town pump, get out. We're like, hey, where you got showers? You you know how much are they? Fourteen dollars for showers. Gladly swiped whatever. A, yeah. swiped card, gave them cash, whatever. We we grab the keys, we walk up there, and those freaking 
bathroom houses were nice. That was yeah. Do, they were like they had a, a toilet, um, you know, a mirror, towels, a shower. They it was like a built-in like soap dispenser if you didn't have any. Yeah, maybe like, like washcloths. It was everything that you needed in this one room. Like you didn't have to travel anywhere, yeah. shape or form. You were just there. And dude, mm-hmm. I got in there. I how long did we spend? I I think I showered for like an hour. It was like a long time. like every minute, like every every bit of an hour. I, I remember sitting on the toilet for like fifteen minutes just so I just because I could. Yeah. I didn't even, I didn't yeah, even yeah, go yeah. to the bathroom. I, the I, same just, thing. Yeah. I just sat there and looked at my phone, and I mean, I was pulling. I feel bad for the person who had to clean that shower drain because I was pulling out dreads, like actual dreads, out of my hair. Like I mean, it looked like someone like killed a woolly mammoth. And put it in the bottom of this shower. Like, I was, I mean, I was just ripping out hair, and it was, like, gross. And But I felt amazing. Like, I, I as soon as I got out of that, I mean, I switched into my clothes because we brought extra. Dude. Got out, and bliss. I felt good. And we, like, walk out, and we're like, dude, this that was a whole new Hour-long movie. shower in sweatpants? Yeah. After being in the mud. And I was like, oh. Oh, it was, it was beautiful. And uh, we get out. We we go find some food somewhere. McDonald's. Yeah, McDonald's. Dude, we ate so much. That McDonald's. Hammered McDonald's. I mean, just we were just craving nasty food. Just disg- I mean, just disgusting, greased up foods. Yeah. We just we were craving that. So we just we just I mean we went to town on it. But before I left. Oh yeah, this at this point we figured out that Drake had forgotten how to drive. Wait, what do you mean? Remember you almost got us killed? Whoa, whoa, whoa wait, I gotta tell him why i was driving at such wee hours of the night no before that oh when yes i forgot yeah. about the, yeah 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 i turned totally on the wrong way <laughs> yeah i told I, I i it was like it was the left u-turn i think yeah it was something like that and someone just like i mean I, it's all <clears throat> all my fault and yeah. they like they go by me and i'm like and what was weird is like it was like a sense of like sensory overload I was having <laughs> these traffic with, lights with all the lights because I've just spent like so much time in the backcountry like there's not a light there's not anything and I'm like I'm overloaded like freaking out like I'm like I'm struggling to drive and Luke's like seeing it in my face like I'm like oh, what's going on right now and so like I get out I get on the interstate we did our showers this whatever at this gas station, I was going in, and I was going to get me some coffee because I was, I was picking up the first leg of the drive. I thought it was going to be like three hours, you know, me driving because we're both tired. Luke switches on, we switch off, that sort of thing, all the way back home. Yeah. So I get, I get there, and there's this coffee. It says high ca- high, the highest caffeinated coffee like, that they had there, high caffeine. Its name was Screaming Eagle Coffee at this town pump. So, I mean, I grab a large, I mean, XL, you know, launch that up, put the top on, tastes like gas station coffee. We're going, and I don't know what illegal drugs and narcotics they put in this coffee. But, and and the fact that I haven't had coffee in like 10 days also added to this, I hit that stuff, and it's like a high. Like, it's like you would have thought I was on speed because I put that stuff, and I, I, I drank that coffee, and I drove from, like, 7 to, th- like, three thirty four in the morning. Yeah. And I mean, like, through Wyoming. Like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Montana, Wyoming. I made it to South Dakota before we switched out. No, I was still in Wyoming when we switched out. Yeah. But, but, like... I I was going and I was clipping down the road and there was a spot where we were going through like the Bighorn Mountains on I ninety <laughs> and Luke's in the back. Seat. I'm in the back, passed out. I I woke up one time at, at one thirty a.m. and he's screaming along to like ACDC. Yeah, like, like Highway to Hell. I mean, like, like screaming in the front seat. and like you're just passed out. I'm like, like, all right, whatever. So I go back to sleep and I'm you know I'm sleeping, chilling in the back seat and all of a sudden. Boom! <laughs> I I fly off the back seat and I slam into the back of the driver's seat, like, like the back of the driver's seat like, and the passenger seat. Boom! Yeah, and then bounce back <laughs> into. Your seat. And what's funny is when he did this, he he wham wham. I mean, hit the back of the seat back into his seat, and I'm still driving at 
And and like 30 seconds later, it's when he reacts. He gets up. Oh, oh, what just happened? <laughs> and I'm like, we just about died. No, 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 no. What you said is, we passed through a mule deer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we about passed through a mule deer. Because, I mean, I'm clipping. I'm going. Dude, it was like, yeah, you're going like. Uh, you're going fast. Oh, we're going. I was going like ninety. Yeah, yeah I was going. Fast. I was going too fast because like the speed limit out there is like eighty. Yeah. So th- I'm going like ninety, and there was a n- large group of <laughs> mule deer crossing the road. I'm talking like big mule deer. There was like twenty of them, and I'm not joking. I'm driving like hoo, hoo, through mule deer. I slam the brakes to stop on one. Luke, whack whack, you know, and then we get out. I mean, like, I had to slow down from 90 to, like, like 30. And, I mean, that's boom, boom. He yeah. hits it. And so I, I drive around the mule deer, get out. And Luke, like, 30 seconds later, after we're past the mule deer, he like, oh, oh, what just happened? And I'm like, do we about pass through a mule deer? And he's just kind of, like, laughing and stuff. Right. Next thing you know, he's like, all right, <laughs> and he like, he like just falls back asleep. Like he's like, like he. I answered him like 15 seconds later. He's back and back in there, just out, dude. I hadn't slept in so long. Yeah, and you slept good back there. That back seat was pretty good. And uh, so I'm driving, and I make it to like four o'clock. And Luke just gets up, and he's like ready. You know, yeah. he's, he's slept. I'm he's, like, all right. He can't, he can't sleep anymore. And he's tired of being in the back seat. And he's like, are you sure? I'm like, I'm good. Like, yeah, I'm still, you weren't even. I'm still narked up from this, <laughs> from this coffee. I'm just like, no, dude, I got, I got like three more hours in me, man. And he's like, just switch. I'm like, okay. So I switched. I go back there. I fall asleep. We wake up somewhere in Rapid City, somewhere else. Dude, that leg of the drive I did through South Dakota was the worst. On the way back? Yeah. Yeah, so he Ugh. he does, like, through the last part of Wyoming to the middle of South Dakota is where he ended up. And he hated it because South Dakota, the sun was coming up in South Dakota, but there's nothing to see in South Dakota. Yeah. It's just we were excited when we saw a tree out there. Like, it was nothing. But I remember the middle of South Dakota is where the first Casey's was. Yeah. And that was life-changing. We got Starbucks. Yeah. And we got Casey's. And we got one of those breakfast burritos. Dude, that was amazing. And it was, like, the best-tasting thing I've ever had was that just that day just getting back there and eating that. Oh, it was so nice. So then we switched out there. So I start driving, and we get to Iowa something, Sioux City, this, that, <laughs> something. I don't know. Not Sioux City. We we get – maybe it was Sioux City. I don't remember. It was one of those spots where, like, you go through the top of Iowa. You could go that way and keep going straight and go through the top of Iowa, or you can turn south and go through, the, through Iowa and down to Missouri. To get I, home. Hit I-70, and then, you know – you know, then hit all the way back to our house down in southern Illinois, like the bottom tip of southern Illinois. Well, I'm like, man, we've been on this road for way too long. And because I stopped looking at the GPS, and I start, we let's start looking. I, I open up the phone. I'm like, oh, no. I'm in the back seat, and I hear, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you mean, uh-oh? And I missed and said, the exit. I missed our exit. I was like, all right, we'll just turn around. He's like, no, like 47 minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> to the point where it wouldn't make sense to turn around. It'd be the same way. But what I did effectively added two hours to our already 23-and-a-half-hour drive. So now we're, we have to be in the car in going a different route. And this is where the trip like just was like – this was the last like eight hours of the trip. We were just done. Misery. We it was it was it was the longest eight hours of my life. It Horrible. was just we couldn't stand it no more. It was crazy the first on the way out there, the first five hours, like I don't even yeah. flew by. Yeah. Flew by. It didn't even feel like I'd been driving for thirty minutes after five hours. Yeah. And on the way back that eight hours just I wanted to die. Yeah, it was so slow. I mean, honestly, for twelve hours on that first way on the way out there, yeah. Nothing. It nothing. was it was whatever, yeah, it was you know. We were we were doing good, and then it started slowing down. But then, that on the way back, it just it was slow. So we get there, 
<laughs> we're going through Minnesota at some point in time. We ended up making it Minnesota, which was not on the the <laughs> that's list. That's not correct. <laughs> that's not where we needed to be. We ended up in going through Minnesota. Um, yeah, so like we're way off. And I remember Luke is in the back seat calling his dad. And on my truck, I have like these on my oh, window. I forgot about that. On these windows, I have like little like things that like cup over the side of the windows. And mine had like the glue or silicone had started to come off. And me going down the road, it's like, like starting, g- 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 yeah, it's just g- 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 hitting the side. And it started doing that probably like an hour yeah. and a half ago, like whenever this, whenever this moment happened. And it's just, you know, just d- 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 hitting our thing. And he's on the phone with his dad, and I'm, like, going 75. I pull over in the median, or not in the median, but over on the side. Yeah, on the shoulder. On the shoulder of the road. Put it in park. Slam. Yeah, I'm on the phone with my dad. Yeah, it's going good. Drake slams on the brakes. Moves over. Moves over. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're in Minnesota. Puts it in park. Opens the door. Slams his door. It's like, yeah, Drake's uh, stopping right now. Walks around the front of the truck. I don't, I don't know what he's doing. Grabs the thing, rips it <laughs> off, rips it off like it had just killed your firstborn child. Like <laughs> just such disdain on your face. Dude, it was so annoying. Dude, you and rips it off. He just starts laughing. Luke I, just starts dying. I was like, oh, he just ripped off part. Of it. You get back in, slam the door. And don't say anything. Put it in drive and throw the thing in the passenger <laughs> throw seat. Throw the thing in the passenger seat because you're in the back seat. So I yeah. throw the thing in the passenger seat and just back to going. <laughs> and no one spoke about it until like you get off the phone and you're like. Dude, you just ripped off part of your door. Like, yes, yep. that thing was so annoying. Um, and then after that, um, we basically drive all the way, yep. get home, and we had two arguments throughout the last part of the trip. One is I don't like spring water. I don't. I, I like purified water. This is one of those things. It's it's a dumb little thing, but I don't like when it says Such spring water. Like ice, ice Mountain. I hate Ice Mountain. I like Dasani. I don't like Dude, Dasani's so bad for you though. I don't care. I don't care. I don't I don't like the taste. They of, put chemicals in it that make you more thirsty. Okay. Okay. I don't care. It spring water tastes horrible. So anyways, he gets in there. I get okay. No, 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 no. I get to start this off. <laughs> I get into Casey's. We're buying our breakfast burritos. I know he's probably not gonna get himself or you didn't have a drink. No. So I go to grab myself a bottle of water. Casey's 89 cent spring water and I grab another one to be a nice friend because I was like oh he doesn't have a drink I'm gonna get him a drink check out you know we get in the truck a while later you said man like, I, I don't have a drink I was like oh I got you one and I, and I put the water bottle in the cup holder and you said I'm not drinking that <laughs> he said I'm not drinking that or I said I'm not drinking that he goes why are you not drinking that so that's spring water I don't like spring water he goes, dude, it's water. I said, dude, it's water. He goes, I'm like, not drinking that. I'm not drinking that. It's I said, tastes, tastes you, horrible. Tastes horrible. You said you needed a drink. I got you water. I said, I, 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 I don't I'm care. Not, I'm, I'm not, not drinking, drinking that. I don't <laughs> like spring water. <laughs> and then Luke's just like, I just I, snapped. I got this for you. <laughs> I said, you just drank out of a creek for eight days. Filter in water. You're not going to drink spring water. You said, I don't care. <laughs> I don't I like, like spring water. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just yelling. I don't like spring Spring water. I don't like spring water. And you're just like yelling back, you drank out of a spring. And we're just like going back and forth. So I'm, I'm like, I'm not drinking. I'm not drinking it. So we keep going down the road. Fine. I'm, I'm fine. Like, he's like, fine. We're not drinking it. Not drinking it. An hour later, I'm like, hey, Luke. <laughs> hey, Luke. I'm really thirsty. Could you hand me that spring water? And whenever I said that, Luke lost his mind on <laughs> You said <laughs> you you said you didn't like spring water. I You're mean, too good for spring water. He let me have it, and I choked down that spring water. I didn't like it. Choked down. I choked, spring water. I choked down that spring water. But dude, he as soon as I asked for it, I mean, he tore me a new. I, I was mean, waiting. He, he yelled at me for like 15 minutes down the road, and it was hilarious. I was so done. We just got to the point where we just were. It was an argument, but we were just laughing about it. It wasn't like an actual yeah. argument. And then the apple, which I don't even, I even forgot about the apple. It had something to do with not taking a bite out of someone else's apple. No, 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 no. We're driving down the road. We're driving down the road. I'm in the back seat, but I'm like on my phone. And you're driving. And you said, if you had a girlfriend, she asked, and you're eating an apple, 
and she said, "Hey, can I have a bite of your oh, apple?" Oh, so I asked the I asked the question. Yeah, just randomly. Randomly. <laughs> it's been it's been silent. It's been silent for at least twenty four minutes. <laughs> and you said, "If your girlfriend asked for a bite of your apple, and you, you were already a couple bites in, like, would you give her a bite?" And I was like, "Yeah, like, I mean, I don't, it's my girlfriend. I eat an apple." Like, and you're like, "No." <laughs> like no way you're I'm like not, no i'm not letting her just, no i'm, I'm not, not letting her bite my apple and she's and he's like why not why wouldn't you let your girlfriend bite your apple and i'm like because i'm working on the apple i'm holding the apple and it's my apple and i'm eating it and messing it's like would you i was like would you let your girlfriend like pick up a burger and just eat the burger and he goes yeah i'm like what? No, I didn't say yeah. Because that, that's a different thing. You said you're the apple. You said you're, it's all up in your zone, right? Yeah. If you bite it, your face <laughs> is all up in it, and she can't have a bite. And I'm like, well, when you bite it, it makes a little edge, and she can just take a bite off the edge. I mean, it's your girlfriend. And like, I'm it's like, an apple. You're like, no. What, what if you had a burger? You said a burger. When you had, would you let her? I'm like, well, burger's different because if you set it down, then it might fall apart, and then she's gonna have to pick it up, and she's gonna have to put it back down. I'm like, it's, I, mean, I don't know. That's a, different than an apple. You said, no, it's not. It's the same thing. It's the same idea. If you're working on your burger, you're not gonna let your girlfriend have a bite of your burger. <laughs> and we just went back and forth for like, it, for 10, like 10, 15 minutes. More than that. It, <laughs> we were like, we were on it for Dude, like a solid. We were pulling in 30. logic and like examples yeah. and hypothetical. I, like. I brought this up with other people when I got back home. It was like about this apple. And I remember texting you like three days later. Hey, I talked to someone about the apple and they agree with me. And then I was like, I talked to someone else about the apple and they agreed with you. And so we're like bringing so up. Dumb. It was like, I don't know why. Like, but just on the way back, it was like we were irritable. Not really, but like. We just were like more outspoken. I remember. So, I can say this because she won't ever listen to this podcast. But I remember when I got back to campus, I walked in and my girl was there, and she she just got back from something. One of her friends was down there, and her friend was the one that like I saw first when I came there. She's like, "Oh, hey, Luke, how'd your trip go?" And I didn't realize until after. I literally did not even make eye contact with her. Like I did not answer her. I did not look at her. I did. Not, I just <laughs> walked straight past her and went to my room. <laughs> and I gave my girl a hug. She's like, "What did Bethany say?" I was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot she said something to me." I was like, "Oh, it was good." <laughs> like, dude, I was done with people, man. Yeah. Well, I was. That's funny because I was the only person you were talking <laughs> to. He was saying he was done with me. When I dropped him off, he was like, "Okay, bye." <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. We we got to your house and you went inside. Yeah. <laughs> you, you left your pack in the truck. You didn't say like, "Oh, that was a good." You're just like, "All right." So, yeah. You're, did I tell you what your dad said to me? No, I've never told you this. <laughs> that's perfect yeah this is coming out on the podcast i've told my dad this i have never told you this you can't like you said hi to ellie the the dog and like and you just went inside and your dad you know he came out he's like oh how's the trip he said good and he went inside and he comes over to me and he he like does this for a handshake and he like grabs my arm with the handshake and he like pulls me in he's like thank you <laughs> 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 he's like he looks at me that's the most serious <laughs> I've ever seen him. It's the most he's ever like he like grabbed my hand and he cut me behind the like arm. He like pulled me in and he looked me right in the eye and he said, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, dude. Anybody's gonna put up with Ser- me <laughs> anybody's gonna put up with me for eight or nine days or ten days. <laughs> it deserves a thank you. It deserves an award. <laughs> I'm just a lot to handle. <laughs> no, we had so much fun. And yeah. And <clears throat> this is the we're wrapping it up. I don't even know how long how long have we been doing this. An hour and forty three minutes. Oh my god. This is gonna be our longest podcast by far. Yeah. I was over three days too. We uh we this is what we're kinda getting at. It's just like that was our first hunt. You know, we struggled, man. Yeah. We had some we didn't know what we were even in in for. And now looking back at it, I I have the fondest memories you just heard us go on for the last podcast was probably an hour 30 this one's going to be almost two hours probably and uh you see so you heard us go on for almost four hours of podcasting about this three three and a half hours and the gear on other podcasts yeah and the gear on other podcasts and the gear on our videos and just watching the video all the content you've seen on on instagram and facebook i'd look back on this with the most fond memories yeah, oh yeah. i mean i'm i'm the fact that me and you went out there 
as two college kids that met a year prior, uh, literally a, like that's a, crazy. A year prior in business one hundred and one, he had a this is this is me presentation. He had a picture of him standing behind a turkey, and I walked up to him. And I said, "I like turkey hunting. Give me your phone number." And basically <laughs> from there, we spent the next three months. Every day we're in each, we're, I was in his dorm talking about bow fishing, talking about hunting, talking about camping. And we just constantly talked about it, and our friendship grew. Now we're on, we're, I think, two years, almost on two years yeah. now. And it feels like I've known you for my whole life, yeah. you know. And uh, it, it's, been, it's been awesome. Yeah. And just kind of doing this and, and finding people in college, like, you know, you really do. Having, having good friends, you, you don't find them all that often i've found you know i have a handful of of really good people that i really like to hang out with and luke's one of them and you know the mountain can make or break friendships i can just imagine we we have a mutual buddy that <laughs> that that <laughs> if we took him on one trip <laughs> and and boy oh boy was that an interesting time and that was not what we went through here so, I mean, there's just some people that just – that's not their hobby to go out and do that. And, you know, props to Luke. He didn't have a tag. I told him I would basically pay for the gas to get out there if he would be my cameraman. He's like, sure, why not? Let's Free just, trip to Montana for let's me. Let's go. And, and he knocked it out of the park. All the footage that you see there, he filmed, basically. I didn't get enough, though. Yeah, but, I mean, honestly, that's the best, that's the best film we've had you know, on this channel and it'll get better. We know more and, and things happen, whatever. And it's just going to get cooler and cooler and cooler. And, yeah. and I'm just, I'm stoked for what the future has to offer this year. I, I pulled two tags, two elk tags, you know, last year was my first year. This year I have two tags. Like it's, things are crazy, man. Yeah. And, and I'm going to be, I'm, I'll be going for one of them at least for sure. On the one of them, we're, we're still going to try to, Try to we'll co- coerce them, we'll coerce see. them into both of them. But we're <laughs> we're you know we're getting after it, and there's gonna be more films and a lot more fun trips coming out of this. And I really hope you guys go back and watch what what videos we put out because I mean that expresses exactly what we did the best. Even though it's not the highest quality, it's not gritty, it's not meat eater, it's not these. It's it's what happened. You know, it's just two college kids going out. And, and and enduring the woods. Yeah. And we weren't we're nothing special, you no. know. And people who are coming from the east and it's their first time are young kids who have heard their grandparents talk about putting in twenty points and going out once in their lifetime and getting the big elk that they put on the wall and they think that it's just so far out and unachievable. It's not. Just with a little bit of planning, you can get out there and you can have an amazing trip. Yeah. You can have a a trip where you suffer like we did too, and you will. That's gonna be your first trip. You're gonna suffer. Yeah. You're not gonna understand a thing. But as you keep going, more tags you get, more times you go out, and keep being persistent and determined with it, you're going to have a lot of fun times. And I love it. I, I look back for, on it every every you know time I think about it fondly, and I can't wait to go back. And it's gonna get more fun and fun. And this year. There will be an elk on the ground sometime this year. Yeah. And it'll be my first elk. I'll get behind it, and I'll be smiling and happy. And it's going to be a film with it, and it's going to be fun. So I just I just encourage people to get out there. Go elk hunting. Go bear hunting. Go western hunting. Go on a multi-state turkey hunt. Do Just go out. If you want to give your things deer, go to a different state and try deer. Or do a plan a week-long thing where you go a few – 100 miles, two hours away, whatever it is, and, and try a new spot and put in the time to just do something different um, and, and just and just sit back and enjoy it. I mean, yeah. it's, th- these trips, they really clear your mind. Yeah. And, uh, and they're really fun. And they, they, they push you. Yeah. They push you. So that's basically it. Yeah. You can go onto the website and uh, order – some gear or not gear you can order some merchandise from us at big money outdoors doc the big money um please go out and do that every little bit of that helps us uh, get to go out and do some more of these these films everything's going to get bigger and better 
Uh, I'm super excited for it. And uh, check out all the the gear lists and stuff like that that I have on the articles on that page. We have the gear list that I took, that Luke took. Um, actually, my gear list is improved for this one. So I have the gear list that I'm taking out for this year. We have gear list from Luke's last year. I have the weight breakdown. I have the closing, clothing system ar- uh, article. I have the food system article. Um, check all that stuff out. It's going to be very helpful and insightful for people who are um, just starting out to get into it and things to think about that they might have not have thought about before. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. This was the Montana hunt, and it was it was a great hunt. Can't wait to go back out again. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. This was a fun one. Yeah. Just, just I mean, it felt effort. It felt effortless. And so we're just gonna we're gonna end it on that one. So this is me, your host Drake Dury, and my co-host Luke Eisenhower. And we are out on the Big Money Podcast. <laughs>